All right, so we're sitting here with uh, Dan Wilker in this awesome van of Brutal Truth and Anthrax and Jesus, how many other vans? Wow, you went right from the right to the beginning there, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know, Nuclear Assault, this would be Hemlock Exit 13, Crucifist. The guitar player of Crucifist is sitting there on the front. It's his I own the band. band. <laughs> that was Rich from Brutal Truth. <laughs> so, uh, you guys started a very long time ago in Brutal Truth, correct? 1990, actually, was the original formation. 1952. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you went for how many years before there was a wall eight. of 10? Uh, we broke up in 98, then there was an eight year lull until 2006. Three what? years ago. Why did you guys break up? Was it uh, just. There was some issues going on between people in the band that just got too intense and made it impossible to do anything, but. That ain't gonna happen now. And coincidentally, we have a different guitar player because our original guitar player couldn't do it. So, so this is gonna. This isn't just a one-off album, then, right? This is actually the band you're going forward. And there's gonna be more albums and more tours. And well, I mean, like if the planet isn't destroyed tomorrow, <laughs> right? <laughs> if, uh, civilization, if civilization doesn't, uh, you know isn't destroyed next week when Pakistan falls to the Taliban and their hundred odd nuclear weapons are cast across Western Europe <laughs> by, by North yeah. Korean, <laughs> Korean made uh, missile technology. True. Right. <laughs> so if that doesn't happen, then this is... <laughs> well, that's we, why we we've take got big plans, assuming everything else works out for the rest of the fucking planet. <laughs> we do things on a day-to-day -day basis due to the imminent threat of apocalypse. <laughs> That's a good plan. Yeah. Our next album is called The Psychological Effects of the stress of impending disaster. No, that's a book he's got that he showed me. He goes, look, I've got a book called The Psychological Effects of Impending Disaster. <laughs> nice. So uh, maybe that will end up. When, when they make a movie out of Brutal Truth like they did with Anvil, that's what it's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> will you then go on tour with Judas Priest? I hope so, man. Yeah, so you, you pretty much, you got back together after the whole uh, I Hate God tribute. Was that the kind of what brought it together? Yeah, that's what put us in the same room. Cool. And once we did that, see the thing is, when we did that three years ago, first we rehearsed it here in Rochester. And our original guitar player, Gern, lives in Northeast Connecticut. And Rich is from Philly, so. Yo, what's up, Philly in the house, yo! So since we have a good rehearsal scenario here, everybody met up here. And it was January 2006, so, you know, it was complete crazy black metal weather. But both of these guys drove from seven hours in different directions to convene here to learn a song that had four chords in it. So, <laughs> once we learned the song, we were like, well, you know, uh, what are we going to do now? So we smoked some weed and said, hmm, let's see if we can play our old stuff. Why not? <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, we have already learned Sister Fucker by Hate God. That's really not part rocket Part one science. and part two. Yeah, part one and part two. <laughs> yeah. Neither of which was that fucking, uh, what you call it, <laughs> challenging, we'll say. So then we said, yeah, well. Let's play some of our own stuff, just to see if we could. And we could, so we did. And then we, just one thing led to another, like this. These guys came up twice, in January 2006 to learn the song, and then two months later to record it. So I forgot which one of those sessions it was. Really. The initial one was just to see if we could still play. Mm -hmm. You know, like the initial one was, it was with the idea of, yeah, we'll do this cover tune, but it was also like, uh, what'll happen if we start doing this, you know? And then once we had the first one, we were like, oh, we can do this again. And then we rescheduled the next one to actually make the recording. Now, was everybody else in bands still, other than Dan's 20 projects that he has going? Pretty much. Yeah, Total Fucking Destruction is one of the most important bands on the planet. I'm surprised you guys haven't heard of it. What's it called? Total Fucking Destruction. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, that. All right. Didn't they go on tour with uh, Britney Spears or hey, Judas Priest? One of, yeah, Judas Priest. One of those big concert tours. <laughs> yeah, I'm still doing Crucifist, and uh, uh, Rich got TFD. TFD. I've been, you know, I've been, you know, inspired of a lot to move into like the poetry sort of spoken oh, word scene on. lately. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Subject, I mean, though. you know, music is a great way for me to express my feelings, but it's, sometimes it feels so limiting. I'm a tree. <laughs> <laughs> what about Kevin? Was Kevin still in the uh, 
in the industry, so to speak, or yeah, he did some stuff with Damage from Australia, and then uh, he formed Venomous Concept with the Napalm guys, and then those guys asked right. me to be in the band, so I'm doing that now too. And uh, <laughs> what's we'll call it? Yeah, yeah. Eric. Well, hi. Uh, what I'm doing. Obviously, you know he's our new guy, but he is in fucking Sulaco doing that. Calibus. And of course, he's known from Lethargy. Calibus isn't Calibus? together no more. He was touring with Nuclear I Assault with Calibus you, right? Reformed. Briefly. Uh, yeah, Eric did some shows with Nuclear too. Got so, the uh, Eric Berg project. I knew that. Uh, what's my call? It? Oh yeah, I forgot BCT. Yeah, BCT. I knew when it forget came, BCT. When it came, uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's after all, it's as important as total fucking destruction. <laughs> Dude, we're talking about bands that you know are at the preeminent pinnacle of rock, pop, soul, funk, disco, and grind. <laughs> BCT, TFD, Crucifist. <laughs> yeah, wherever that pinnacle is. How do you balance having so many bands and functioning in all of them? You plan well in advance. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> right, John, you get an email. Can we play on July 26th? I'm like, uh, as of now, I think so. If it changes, <laughs> yeah, I'll exactly let you know. <laughs> so Nuclear Salt is still together also? Well, Nuclear Salt ain't going to be doing really that I'm, I'm fucked much. up his arm. No, his arm's better, going. but John's a school teacher now. John's a fucking full-time school teacher, which means the only time he can really do shit is in the summer. And... Right now, for me, brutal truth, the absolute priority, man. You know, it's gonna have to work around that. And Eric, also playing in nuclear, I mean, we discussed that. Ironically enough, there's a festival called Brutal Assault in the Czech Republic. <laughs> <laughs> brutal Truth is booked on it, and we're seeing if we could have nuclear assault on it, just for the irony. <laughs> yeah, that's great. But you could play at the same time. You could kind of coordinate all the songs together. That's terrifying. <laughs> <the fucking thought. laughs> Another walking corpse town. <laughs> well, maybe the Pope would sound more. Yeah, you could do <laughs> hanging pope and lesbians. Those would be uh, pretty short songs it's to throw terrific. in there. <laughs> how, how, do, how do crowds differ from the U.S. to other countries? They, they turn American. up, man. Yeah. I mean, uh, <laughs> they're crazy Italian people. I wonder if that's sarcastic with the guy they're doing that. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, uh, the Italians are great because our music is perfect for them because it just makes their heads explode. They just, they fucking freak out, you know? They're just like the, uh, the Japanese, it's like almost the same thing. They have a very, what should we call it, accelerated lifestyle. I think it's all the coffee with both those motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> what should we call it? But, uh, the Norwegians might stand there with their arms folded, but then they'll come up later and say, that was a great show. There was man. that guy in Offenburg that took off his pants. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Is there yeah. a story attached to that? No, oh, it's a hard, it's a sordid story. We played in Offenburg, Germany, which is not too far from Switzerland and directly across from uh, Strasbourg, France. In Germany, just over the river from France. Yeah, it's like... Yeah, it would be like 10 miles from here, you'd be in France. Right. So these crazy French guys come to the German shows, and they're a lot more uninhibited. You know, the Germans are a bit kind of like, you know, a, little, a bit kind of like more serious, not kind of like the Scandinavians, but they get silly when they drink their beer. But the French, they show up all fucked up on red wine, and yeah. they brought three gallons with them. Yeah. And Three gallons and no corkscrew. And, we're playing. <laughs> and we see a guy standing in the middle of the crowd. He's got his arms raised. He's like, hey, look at me. And we look close, and the only thing he's got on is like fucking shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I remember they were tan ankle-high boots, because as soon as I saw he was naked, I just started looking at his shoes. And his <laughs> like, wow, are those loafers? <laughs> and, uh, and to make it worse, he got on stage and stage dived, so yeah. he's fucking oh, <laughs> sweating balls and ass and right? Some guys see balls swinging around. <laughs> awesome. He's a brave man, though. You didn't bump into got... him or anything. No, you know, but oh, he, we were but... hanging out with him in the parking lot afterwards. He had his pants down around his ankles <laughs> and two bottles of wine, one under each hand. There was no oh. crowd surfing, was there? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was doing it. And this yeah. was a very small place. We played in the basement of a church, like yeah. a youth uh, center. Really? So it was yeah, like... It was definitely what you would call elevated testicles. <laughs> I mean, there were that could be an 80 or 100 people there, and like you couldn't move. It was packed. You yeah, know? so you might have ended up with fucking uh, getting teabagged by a <laughs> <laughs> It was underground.